So go on, Carl, what is your favourite advert? It's that one your friend sent us of someone getting attacked by a dog on a stick. Don't, no context, just put the clip in. From the moment the TiVo first launched in the early 2000s, a feature users endlessly requested from the company who made it was the ability to skip ads in their entirety. As it turns out, engineers could have absolutely engineered such a feature on the very earliest iterations of the device. However, they decided against it purely to placate broadcasters. So I think we actually have a fair few audience members who are on the young side. Yes, and they might not know what the fuck a TiVo is, because they'd like everybody else watch all their stuff on Netflix and YouTube. So a TiVo is a device that allows you to record and play back television programs. I know, how future does that shit sound? Well, they're still fairly popular. My mum's got one. Um, and they're quite popular in America in rural areas where the internet's not that great. And like its main selling point initially when it launched is you can record your favourite TV programmes and watch them back later. It's, I know it sounds like no, so quaint in retrospect given that people watching this at home can, while watching this, stream pornography in 4K on a handheld device they carry around in their pocket. In, now in virtual reality. Yeah, you can, you can put on a pair of VR goggles and just like, you know, join that orgy. But... <laughs> Trust us when I say, like, when this first launched in the early 2000s, like, it blew people's fucking minds. Because up until that point, they'd only been able to watch their favourite TV programmes when the man wanted them to. Or if they'd, like, you know, recorded it on, like, VHS or DVDs later. Yeah, can we, as, like, a, a couple of old men, can we talk for a second to the kids in the audience about VHS? Oh, VHS tapes? was so sick. It was well good. I remember, though, not knowing how it worked. And I think my, like, my parents were, like, recording, like, Batman Forever off the uh, bloody the TV or some shit like that. And I kept switching over to Cartoon Network where it had Batman of the Future in it. So while they were watching like Batman Forever, he just smashed up to Terry McGuinness, just drop kicking Blight into a vat of toxic waste. Like, yeah! The thing is, I want that kind of technology to make a comeback. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, Brad, but cassette tape sales are the highest they have ever been in like the last 40 years, I think, something like that. Because a lot of musicians have realized, like indie musicians have realized, oh, cassette tapes are cheap as fuck, easy to record onto, and collectible as all balls. They are more collectible. And they've got like, as well, like things like Guardians of a Galaxy. I was gonna say, do you reckon that might have contributed? They did, yes. Yeah. It saw a massive resurgence in sales of that particular um, cassette player. Which is the most unrealistic aspect of any Marvel movie. Yeah, I can believe that Iron Man, Tony Stark, will build, like, you know, the first Iron Man suit out of scrap in a cave. I can't believe that a pair of headphones from the 80s would last 25 years. <laughs> Do you reckon it would be more realistic if every single time they played one of the songs they only played they only through played one, one sound? It's like, yeah, <laughs> fucking. Then again, it is Sony and they do tend to make quite good headphones. I've got a pair of them downstairs that I've been like using for the last five or six years every single day. So I think it's an alien concept now, but when TiVo first came out, it was like revolutionary in allowing you to fast forward through shows. Yes. But. I'm pretty sure that that was so you could fast forward the ads. Yes, that was what everyone understood that feature to mean. Although TiVo themselves never directly alluded to that fact in any of their own advertising because they didn't want to piss off advertisers. But everyone buying a TiVo knew that fast forwarding through the content you'd recorded meant I can skip the ads. See, I think the draw would be better if you'd put in like an ability to fast forward a, like a block of seconds. Or just skip, like, for example, skip ahead a set amount of time. Yeah. Oh, you mean like with a replay TV? What's a replay TV? Exactly. So joking aside, yes. I actually don't think I've heard of replay TV ever. Well, it's basically a TiVo, and it had all the features of a TiVo I've already described, but it shit all over it in terms of user functionality, because it had an inbuilt option to skip ads entirely on any content you recorded. Whenever I go home and watch my mum's, like, TV, and I'm like, this is so bad. I can't get over just how obnoxious the advertising is compared to like binge watching like four and a half hours of The Punisher season two without even stop. Like, you even in the Netflix, it even gives the option to skip the introduction to the show. It's like, no, fuck the credits, fuck the introduction. I just want four and a half straight hours of John Berenthal just man grunting and shooting people. It is really like you know hard to fathom 
how much of a game changer this was for like you know the like for users back then and I'm not even getting to the best part of what the replay TV could do because in addition to like you know automatically skipping all ads from content you recorded you also have the ability to share content you'd recorded with other replay TV owners including content they hadn't paid for so say for example like use a modern example like you know you can share some like HBO Go account to watch Game of Thrones you could do that shit back then like you could record like wrestling pay-per-views or boxing pay-per-views, skip all the fucking ads and then send it to your mate with a replay TV for him to watch even if he didn't have that show or if he'd not paid to watch it. So basically it was Netflix and the Pirate Bay combined on a device that you could own in the 2000s. So why have I never heard of it? Because advertisers fucking sued the shit out of the makers of it. Oh, that, okay, yeah. yeah. So that, all joking aside, like broadcasters they rely on advertising to survive so when they first got rumblings of replay tv and what it could do they joined together with like you know a group of in like you know industry bigwigs and went you know what fuck this thing and sued it into financial oblivion and while yes some of the claims like you know the shadowy cabal of companies who teamed together voltron style to destroy the replay tv did hold water such as users can use the device to circumvent and um, you know like pay-per-view content and view stuff they'd not paid for, the real reasons they are, you know, decided to destroy it before users realised, oh wow, skipping ads is fucking awesome, is because if they had that realisation, they'd never go back to the way it was. The same way, like, me and you, and I'm guessing a majority of our audience who've cut the cord could never go back to, like, you know, traditional terrestrial TV or, like, you know, cable, because the, the ads are so obnoxious compared to what we've got now. Yeah. So they decided, like, you know what, we need to nip this in the bud now and just sue the fucking shit out of Replay TV, and it just... The company got destroyed. And obviously, TiVo were watching this court case very intently and they thought, if we implement you know, the option to skip ads entirely, they're going to do the exact same thing to us and they're going to kill it in the crib because no fucking broadcaster is going to put their shows on this thing if they get to then go to their advertisers who pay all their bills and go, yeah, well, you're not going to make, no one's going to watch any of your ads anymore because TiVo's going to skip them all. So what they did instead is put in a fast forward feature which while allowed you to skip through ads in a way, they still have to watch them. And that's like the Goldilocks mentality there, isn't it? Of like, it's not too much, it's not too little, it's just in the middle, and broadcasters were okay with that. There was so much anti-consumer bullshit back then, there still is today, and I like that TiVo turned it on its head a bit, because it's the boiling frog theory with advertisement, isn't it, where if you just cram, like, so let's use YouTube as an example. If you cram YouTube full of ads and you completely decimate the user experience, no one's going to watch it. But if you just put one ad at the beginning of a video and then slowly ramp it up over time, like a boil, and the theory is the boiling frog, if you put a frog in boiling water, it'll jump out. Yeah. But if you put a frog in a pan full of cold water and slowly warm it up, the frog will sit in it till the water boils and die. And think of the frog as you and the water as ads. And it's like they make a joke about it in Ready Player One, don't they? Where the guy's like, oh, we figured out we can put, we can make someone's entire screen 67% ads before they have seizures. <laughs> we estimate we can sell up to 80% of an individual's visual field before inducing seizures. And that's the kind of shit advertisers do. Yeah. Like they, they want to figure out exactly how much they can push it before people start to push back and then go just before that and then ramp it up. And what TiVo did, and I fucking love this, is they waited. 10 years they played the longest con and they waited and they waited and they waited until advertisers and broadcasters forgot all about the ability to fast forward through ads and decide like you know what TiVo's not a bad thing it's fine it can be part of the ecosystem of television and then what they did is bam in 2015 introduced a feature to skip ads entirely <sighs> because they'd already built up the market share they needed to be able to say fuck you to broadcasters and advertisers by that point, they've been cementing the public consciousness as a thing that exists. Unlike Replay TV, which just got destroyed before I had a chance to do that. So you're explaining this like they had the technology initially. Oh, they did. Well, Replay TV had it, and people like cracking open like you know early iterations of TV that have been released prior to 2015 found that yeah, the, the the functionality to skip ads is in the device. It's just they haven't activated it yet because TiVo were waiting. And the thing is, during the 10 years while they waited for advertisers to you know, get, get lazy on the throne and not like, care what they were doing, they lost so much fucking money to Netflix. And this is the sad part about it. When TiVo announced, oh, you can skip ads on this new device, 
Um, Netflix has already taken over, so it wasn't that big a deal. But I think it would be very cathartic for everyone at home to know how TiVo advertised this new feature. Do you know how they did it? How? By releasing massive billboards that say, give the finger to commercials all over America. And you know what? That's a sentiment I think we can all agree with. So we've shit on ads quite a lot in this video. Yes, because the majority of ads are terrible and the companies behind them are like insidious and shady as all balls and only care about getting eyeballs on their product. Yeah, but as we demonstrated in the first like minute of this video, some of them are absolute gems. Yes, and I don't mind advertising as a concept, it's just when it's handled poorly, which most advertising is. I think like, if an advert's done well, you don't actually mind watching it. And I think the pinnacle of what advertising as a medium can achieve, because it is a medium, it's like, it's, a, it's, a, it's an entire genre of like, entertainment unto itself, is when people actively seek out your adverts, it's so fucking good. And that's why, like, Super Bowl commercials are so, like, famous for, isn't it? Yeah. It's like the production value on them is so high, they basically become miniature movies. Where one of the ones I always reference is the Adidas advert, where they somehow managed to get Daft Punk in it and get them to wear like, like Adidas outfits and then go into the cantina scene from Star Wars. I think the best and most mainstream example is John Lewis Christmas adverts. Yes. Which have become so famous for being good that when one isn't as good, everyone gets really annoyed yeah, about it. Yeah, and if we have Americans or Europeans watching where basically every Christmas, like Christmas adverts are always terrible. It's always like, buy, buy our product consumer. Um, a chain store here called John Lewis, they thought, fuck it. Christmas ads are obnoxious, they're awful, no one really likes. What we're gonna do then is just gonna spend a shit ton of money and make basically what amounts to a short film that you know just encapsulates the spirit of Christmas and then put our logo at the end of it. And it's gotten to the point where people actively wait for those adverts to come out. And I think that's great because you're actually gonna put an effort into making this thing. There's obvious craft there. And then you compare it to like Silly Bang. And you're like, I'm Barry Scott, the loudest man in the world. Bang and that dirt is gone. Why it annoys me so much though, I think, is because I was playing Soul Calibur 4 once and you can make your own characters in that and a guy made a character called Barry Scott and he had his mic on and every time he hit me he went BANG! <laughs> and then when he, after he, when beat... he wiped you out, please tell me he no, said the line. He, after he beat me, he sent me a message saying, and the dirt is gone and <laughs> yes. blocked me. It's like, you fucking prick! Now we know why you don't like, Barry, don't like Scott. Barry Scott. And then, you've got Long Long Man. Long Long Man! Which oh, I should oh, Brad did oh. not know. If you want, like people out there watching, if you want six minutes to go on an adventure and just see what like how, what art can be distilled down to, go watch Long Long Man because it is a fucking adventure. And it's advertising gum. Long Long Man. It was a roller coaster. Car. It is. It's, it's just like you changed my life with that ad. So yeah, go watch Long Long Man. It's just, I don't know what the context behind it is. I just know that's fucking brilliant. Long Long Man. So before we close off, mm -hmm. quick fire round. Yes. I'm going to put the clips in. Name what you think are some good commercials. What's some examples of a good commercial? Well, I'm going to start off with the commercial for Halo 3 which is the diorama one, where it's basically just a load of like action figures of all the characters from Halo 3, and it's Master Chief in the middle, and then it zooms in, and then the plasma grenade starts to glow. It's like, yeah, you go, Master Chief, you fuck him up. I remember that getting me mad hype for Halo. There's that one you showed me earlier, Tommy Lee Jones in Japan. Oh yeah, the Boss Coffee commercials where Tommy Lee Jones is an alien who can fire lasers out of his eyes. I, I, I buy that. Like, I just want to put it out there to any advertiser. If you manage to get some big name celebrity in your ad and you just have them do dumb shit, I will buy your products immediately. Because the, the balls of a company, we've got Tommy Lee Jones in. What should we make him do? How about we get to fire lasers out of his eyes and have a talking dog with him? That shit is awesome. I know we've mentioned it before, but you're putting the clip in again because it's so good. It's the one where Robocop steals the family's fridge. Because <laughs> it's just so dumb. Do that shit more. Just get more movie stars stealing people's fridges. <laughs> 